first off, I want to thank you guys for having me on. I uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about my project and uh, what's going on with it. Um, I guess I should start with just explaining what meatloaf is. Uh, the idea came to me years ago when um, when Steve White had first posted his high 1541 project. I um, was in the comments and someone else had suggested that it might be possible to do what he was doing with high 1541, but with a, an ESP module, a 8266 or ESP32 module. And I kind of waited around for a while for someone to actually do something with it and no one had, so I started working on it myself. Um, the goal wasn't to be, you know, cycle exact 1541 like like the Pi 1541 project, but um, you know something something that could load data over over a network connection, which was you know one of the key features of these little devices. So I um, I started with just a base module that. Um, was just like the, um, you know, the Commodore 64 Wi-Fi modem. So I started with an ESP8266 and started with that circuit. And then I um, built the, uh, or I just added a IEC interface to that. So the original device plugs into the user port with a little IEC pigtail that swings around and plugs into the, um, into the, the IEC serial port on the Commodore 64. Um, so the idea was to just make something that you could plug into the 64 and not need any other device and load data into it, um, either from flash or over a network connection. And that's, that's kind of how things started. So, uh, the plan is to be a multi-device emulator, not just, not just floppy drive and modem, but to add some other virtual devices in there as well. And it, it's basically just a, a way to convert any kind of URL, file URL, into an IEC data stream that can load directly into the 64. Let's see, I'm gonna go to the next slide here. Um, I got started on Meatloaf and got to, uh, got, got a good ways, I got my first first PRD file loading over HTTP and um, was making some good progress. And then I, I discovered the FujiNet project, Tom Cherry Holmes, he had posted a message in one of the Facebook groups and was talking about what FujiNet was and talking about how they wanted to bring it over to Commodore. And uh, I kind of went and looked at everything I could find on FujiNet and realized that we were both working on pretty much the same thing, but they started on Atari. I was on Commodore, of course, and it just made sense for us to kind of work together. So I've joined the FujiNet team and responsible for the Commodore stuff. And I've been still working on all of the meatloaf code and then the, the plan is to move that code into the main FujiNet firmware, um, where you know the pieces that make sense. I still have some ideas for for Meatloaf that are that are kind of Commodore specific or beyond the scope of what what we're planning you know, to do with the food with FujiNet. Um, and also, FujiNet is planning to target multiple platforms, which is not something that I was intending to do with with the Meatloaf project. So. Let's see, um, the differences. So how is Meatloaf different than SD to IEC and Pi 1541? That's a question that I get a lot. Um, for one thing, Meatloaf can, can simulate a stack of 1541 drives, not just one drive at a time. So it, it can respond to any request over IEC to any device ID from four to 30. Those are the available device IDs. And we plan to use some of the, uh, the virtual printer code from FujiNet to, to emulate some virtual printers for the 64 as well. And uh, so that, that's something that's kind of different than what's 
going on with SDIC and 51541. And, and again, we're not planning to make this a cycle exact 1541 emulator like 51541 is. I do have some ideas for extending some of the features to um, extending some of the features so that it's 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 more compatible than an SD to IC. I have some ideas for emulating memory and some things like that that the resources just aren't available on SD to IEC to, to be able to do that. So you know that's kind of kind of the main differences between those projects and what what I'm what we're working on here. So um, all right, so loading data with the meatloaf device, of course you can do, it, it, it has flash memory built into it. So you can store some, some PRG files or some disk images in that flash memory and load those directly from there. Planned on using that may, mainly for maybe some system type stuff or, or an auto boot disk or just utilities, things like that, that you need more often than um, than other types of programs. You can also load data on an SD card just like you would with an SD to IEC, have all your different folders and have everything organized and load disk images, um, load disk images up from there. But you can also, uh, uh, we built a, a, a way to load data from a URL but it's just stored, the URL stored in just a small text file. So it's, it's a text file that just has the URL in it with a .url extension. So when you try to load one of those, the meatloaf device actually just reads the file, grabs the URL and goes out over the internet to read that. I can show that to you. <coughs> let's see, let's do, I'm gonna switch over here and um, I'm gonna do a, a directory listing. Just and we'll get a directory list in here. And we got a few of those files here. One of them is uh, the c64.ml geotd.url. So let's load that one. What it's gonna do, the whole idea of using one of these URL files is that it takes up a lot less space on your, on your flash memory or on your SD card. You can have a, a ton of these URL files that just point to data out on the internet to load directly like this, so I'm just gonna hit 8.1. And over here on the left-hand side, you can see the um, the um, monitor. Oh, that said file not found. So let's try, let's try again. All right, I'm gonna reset this thing. Okay. Let's try one more time. Yeah, connection. There we go. We start getting our data stream. This is all coming in over, you know, HTTP. Meatloaf device connects to the server, requests the uh, request the file, and it just streams it right into the memory of the 64. Just of course, it's it's also doing it at standard IEC speeds, um, so it's just as slow as a real 1541. I have been working on getting Jiffy DOS working, um, and I'm very close to having that. Completed. I kind of wanted to have it ready for for today, but just just ran out of time. So we go this and let's run. So that just that loaded that loaded the data or or loaded a URL from that .url file and then went out over the internet to grab grab the program here. So I'm going to reset. So that's one way to load data, or or I guess I would I would say our um, We've got flash SD and then URL file for loading data. You can also do like a direct URL load. Let me show you that real quick. Um, so you do load and you can just put your full URL in here. HTTP 
from slash slash c64 slash input cc slash gotd. That's the game of the day. So you could have a PRG file out on the internet, wherever you want it, and load it directly with a URL just like this, right? Um, getting very close also to having D64 support working over a URL, as well as you know all of the other media file formats. I have to make some code changes, but I think we've got everything in place so that it'll work, it will work correctly whenever, um, whenever that is done. So uh, well, right now it, it kind of loads and then it, you know, it fails with an error, but we know what that is and we pretty much fix it. So anyway, let's load this, hit enter. Again, it connects to the server directly with the URL that we gave it and loads it directly into memory. And then this is real time and this is a real 64. The uh, meatloaf device is right here on the back. This is the uh, very first prototype PCB design. And as you can see, it has a, it does have an LED strip in it, which will also be programmable by the user. That was something that uh, we added that, you know, thought would be fun. There we go. And again, run, and boom. Yeah, same for them. Um, let's see. Let's go back to the slides. The um, the next way for loading data into the system uh, is with what I call a, a meatloaf short code. Uh, the problem with URL sometimes is that they can be very long. And um, they may or may not include some characters that you might not necessarily be able to type on a Commodore 64 keyboard. So I set up a system that goes, it, it's just kind of a, pro, or a proxy through the meatloaf.cc server to allow you to create short codes and load data that way. So let me show you how that works. Um, so all of the short codes start with ML. So if you do load ML, and let's say, let's do this type of one. And on the left-hand side, you'll see it goes out to the server, it's the API, and it says file not file. So let's try it again. I'm gonna reset. I This is, I am, working off of my development system right here. And this does have the current code that I've been working on. So uh, looks like there's something problem with it at the moment. I'll reset and we'll try again. So something's not getting cleared after a load and I'll fix that. Again, too, this, this project is open source, open hardware. Everything's available on GitHub. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested in getting other people involved and helping build, build things out or, you know, we've got a lot of ideas for it. And right now it's just a few of us working on it. So there we go. So we loaded that with a short code. Run. There we go. Okay. Reset again. Um, another thing that you can do with the short codes is uh, I've set up, I set up a script so that you could load a random, random program as well. So load ML colon star. This just selects a random PRG from a folder on the server. Let's see if it's gonna work this time. There you go. Second load without reset. <laughs> And I have no idea what it's loading right now. It just, there's a folder on the server and it just picks a random PRG from there. So run. There we go, Blackie Bird. <laughs> um, so you can set up all kinds of different short codes. I, I've, I've got to 
build out that interface on the on the website, and uh, I think I think it'll be a fun way for people to to share stuff out on the net. And um, I want to set up profiles so people can have all of their short codes under their profile, maybe get a list, and uh, it'll just be an easy way to to get stuff to other people, share stuff with other people. Okay, the um, the last way that I have for loading data into the system is through a browser add-on that I put together and I ported to all the different browsers. Say um, you're out browsing on the web and you want to load something that you found on CSDB or, or some other website. It's just a link to a PRG file or D64 or something like that. You can do that with this browser add-on. Let me show you how, how that works. I'm going to switch over to browser here. And um, it just we just randomly loaded the um, Flappy Bird. That's what I was going to load here from, from Zimmers.net. But let's switch over to this tab, CSDB. This um, Lovecats demo is pretty good. So let's try that. Lovecats. And the way it works is you're browsing around on your PC. You find a link to a PRG file, D64, whatever that you want to load. You just right click on it. And with the add on in your browser, you select send to meatloaf. You hit that. And it queues that URL, URL up at, at meatloaf.cc and then gives you a command where you go back to your 64. I'm just going to type in that command. You know, stolen star, channel one, hit enter. And it's loading that straight from CSDB. So, again, that saves you from having to type out a big long URL or, or, uh, having to encode it in a way because there's some special characters or something. It's just real easy. You just right click on the URL to the file, enter simple command on your 64, meatloaf device goes out, hits the API, grabs the URL, and then goes and downloads it directly into your system. There we go. <laughs> and reset. Nice and easy. Let's switch back to the slides. So those are a bunch of the different ways that you can load data into your 64 with just this one device. You don't need anything else. You don't need a 1541 or a, you know, a cartridge or anything else. You plug it in and it's ready to go. <laughs> so all right, let's see what's next. Oh, um, the URLs. The URLs, um, the target of the URL can be multiple things. I mean, the, the way the meatloaf library, the, the, the M file library works is it, it, it can decode the URL and it can go through, you can go through multiple layers of protocol and file formats. It, it just does it all magically. Um, my friend in Poland, uh, Shamik, he did most of this code and it, it's just pretty amazing. So you can have a URL, a, a file, say a URL to a web server pointing to a file path to a zip archive with a D64 inside of it and load a file directly out of that. And the meatloaf device just decodes all of that and returns a data stream to the 64 to load. So the whole idea is to be able to get to anything in any file format anywhere out on the, out on the web or out on the internet, regardless of the protocol. I mean, right now we're doing HTTP, but that could be FTP, it could be SSH or a Samba file system on your network somewhere. And and it just it just all magically works. That's the make, whole idea is to make it real easy to get at any kind of data that's out there. Um, Meatloaf will also translate pesky 
to and from UTF-8 on the fly. There are some, some filters that you can apply when loading data. And uh, you know, of course we could do other translations as well. Uh, but so you, you could read a text file and it would do the UTF-8 translation on the fly for you, which is, which is kind of cool. Let's see here next. Um, the Meatloaf hardware, originally it was an ESP8266. This was the first device that I built. Again, I started with a, a Wi-Fi modem and I added on the IEC interface. Later discovered that the level shifter was not needed. So got rid of that and um, later also moved to an ESP32. This is the Lowland D32 Pro module. It's what I use for, or what I've been using a while for doing development. And it's a great module. It uses the ESP Rover chip, which has 16 megs of flash storage and eight megs of PS RAM. So we're not utilizing all of the resources of this, of this chip yet, but it has plenty of room to grow. And this module, is about 10 bucks and it has a lot of nice features of course you get the pin header so you can tie in you know plug in your iec cable and it has a little sd card um sd card slot right on the right on the module too so the um the new hardware though which we've been calling fuji loaf uh, moswald did this pcb design and it came out really awesome that's what i'm using right now to do the demo and uh, we have a few minor modifications to make to this, but so far it's working really great. And hopefully we can get some people to maybe start making these in the near future so that, so that everyone can buy one. So upcoming features. Uh, I mentioned that I've been working on Jiffy DOS support. I'm very close to having that done. And once that is completed, other fast loaders will, will come um, pretty quickly. They all use very similar techniques for, for doing the fast loading. Uh, I've been working on the parallel loading with Speed DOS and Dolphin DOS, and that's very close to, to being finished as well. Um, also, WIC64 applications. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the WIC64 device. It's really, it's really cool little really cool little device. Um, I'll have it handy here, I'll show it to you. But it plugs into the user port and they've built a nice little portal for um, chatting and loading programs over the user port really fast. And I, I've been in contact with the developers of that project and I want to add WIC64 application support to Meatloaf. And I'm also gonna take all of the, all of the D64 and the, the media file format support that I've built for Meatloaf and contribute that back to their project because they uh, it doesn't it doesn't allow you to load D64 files out of D64 images but I'm going to add that back to their or, or contribute that to their project so that they can they can benefit from from the Meatloaf code as well. Um, also, there is the ability to open, read, write close files on any supported URL stream from basic programs. So you could just do a standard open um, one comma eight comma eight file name and uh, read, read a file in your basic program. So it, it doesn't have to be local off of your flash or SD. It could be a URL, URL out on the web. So this opens up a lot of possibilities for network network data loading for games and all kinds of stuff within the 64 because you don't have to do anything special to load anything off of the network. It's just, it, it just thinks it's talking to a 1541. But um, because of that, because it's loading off of the internet, uh, it's unlimited storage. So you could have a game with you know, 20,000 levels. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't care. It just, it just loads the data in and, um, and you're good to go. So uh, it also opens up some other possibilities. Someone in the Discord mentioned that 
they've been working on our their idea for CML, I believe it's Commodore Markup Language for loading uh, for, for creating a, a web browser on the 64. That would be that'd be really cool as, as well. So, anyway, that is my presentation. Uh, happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys letting me tell you about Meatloaf and what's going on with the project. Hey, Jamie, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, it's Leaf. We met in Chicago. Yeah, hey, Leaf. Hey, a big group here with uh, about 20 people. So uh, I noticed on the back of the uh, Fuji Loaf, there are two IAP ports. Is that for a pastor? It certainly is. So I, I've actually got a, a 1541.2 plugged into this, into the Fuji Loaf right now, and I can access both of them. Actually, here I can show you. Um, it's on device nine. And it works, it works just fine. We've got a, 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 a buffer set up so that it doesn't, Drop the line level too low, so you can you can daisy chain real devices to it just like you would a uh, you know regular fifteen forty one. We also have a, a slot we haven't implement haven't done anything with it yet because we're still trying to figure out if we're going to be able to. But on the back of it, there is a uh, a slit in the back of this case to uh, do a pass through on the user port too, because. I know that the Petsky Robots program uses, or, or there's the option to use a Super NES controller, and it also plugs into the user port. So we want to be able to support devices like that um, without having to, you know, remove the remove the meatloaf device and plug in the other. Or, or I mean, it'd be really cool to be able to load Petsky Robots directly from a web server and play it. You know, uh, I've been uh, uh, have been chatting back and forth with um, Greg about this C sixty four OS and getting that compatible with uh, Meatloaf as well. So, lots of fun stuff. Is there anything else I can show you guys? When is this going to be available, and how much is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're uh, gonna my money right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're we're ironing out the uh, the details with the um, with the hardware with the with the new PCB and everything. But I think um, um, I'm hoping that it'll be a. I'm hoping that we can get some people lined up to start building them for next year. I mean, first part of next year. Maybe. But we we have no specific plans right now. Um, but I, I want it as soon as possible, of course. Uh, I, I hope to have more people join in on the Discord, on both uh, Meatloaf and the, the FujiNet Discords, and uh, jump in and help with the projects. That's why, that's why we do these presentations, is just to get people excited. There's a lot of stuff that still needs to be finished with the, with the firmware, and um, we, need, we need more people to, to help do that. It's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> That's my other question is how can the community help you and support you with your project? Um, well, the biggest the biggest thing is is any coders out there that have an interest in this, uh, join in and <laughs> that's that's the biggest biggest thing I think. Um, if you know any if if there's anyone that is I, I know that one of the the resources that FujiNet had for building devices and selling them is no longer available. Uh, so we're looking for, for people that are interested in building and, and you know, working with us to build and sell the devices through their website. I, I, I don't have the time to, to build a bunch of PCBs. I would rather spend my time working on the firmware, you know, so. So those two things, helping with the firmware, helping get the hardware out there. Uh, to, to Just to start, the bare minimum that you need 
to get going with things is an ESP32 module, preferably that Lowland D32 Pro and a DIN6 plug and some wire. That's all it takes to build the minimal version of this to get going with the, with the uh, firmware. Anything else? Okay, I think that's all. Oh, okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys again. I appreciate it. I uh, hope to be there next year if I can. If I can swing it. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Yeah, thank you guys, and uh, be sure to check out the the GitHub and the and the Discord. We'd love to have y'all. <laughs>